What is up everybody? This is your boy Isna Furious and I am here with a new series. Um, this is going to be based off a game that I actually downloaded off Steam. It's called Franchise Hockey Manager 6 and basically what it is is a management game. It's pretty much self-explanatory. It's a management game for a hockey team. Um, you control every aspect including the um, development teams, the AHL teams, even the ECHL teams. Um, you can control any any team in the world, honestly, if you wanted to. They have all different leagues in here. Um, it's actually ran through EliteProspects.com, uh, which has pretty much any hockey prospect or any hockey player that ever played uh, in, the, in their database. So it basically runs off that. Um, it comes from a uh, developer called uh, Out of the Park uh out of the park sports or out of out of the park development uh, i don't remember exactly what it is um but this game basically it's like going on nhl 21 and just managing a team not playing any games just simming through the season dealing with the draft dealing with any trades and signing people so if you rather do it on your pc than being on the playstation itself it's a good option for you if you don't have a playstation or an xbox and you want to and you have a pc it's a good option for you to play um, but basically this is a online league that i'm in that has 31 users um, i am the washington capitals and we are in year i believe 2022 as you can see at the top right there uh, we are september uh september we are on november 6 2022 uh it's a sunday we sim week to week every other day so every 48 hours we're simming a week further into the season uh, right now we're in November so I'm just gonna talk about my team and what happened over the first month of the season um, so as you can see we're in 2022 so the team of the Washington Capitals definitely does not look the same I did not take it over until recently um, I took it over actually this past off season. So there was a lot of names missing from the team when I took it over, uh, like Nicholas Backstrom, Alex Ovechkin. Uh, Alex Ovechkin's a big one to miss. Um, he's somebody that if I had control from the beginning, I don't think he would move from the Capitals. It's kind of a hockey sin to have him play anywhere else. He should re retire a cap. Um, so you're gonna look at the team right here. Our key players right now is Ryan Johansson. Um, he's on his age 30 season. Uh, then we got Lucas Raymond who we who was drafted before I came in But as you can see uh, we got our talent skill and then we got our potential skill um, The talent skills are three and then the potential he's got a potential to be a five-star talent So um, he's still developing. He's still young at the age of 20. This is his second season in the PSHL um, So hopefully he continues to develop for us but those pretty much are our big name players. We really don't have any big names when it comes to the left wing. Um, actually we do, but right now he's on the injured list. We'll go into that next. Um, then you take a look, we got uh, Brian Pravini, uh, Kristen Dvorak we just traded for. He's a good uh, depth piece, especially for the top six. Uh, we got Morgan Geeky. Uh, he was a trade as well of my own. Uh, he's in the top six as well. Um, a lot of these positions are a little messed up. I will go into my lineup because I like I like to I prefer to have my lineup where the left-handers play left wing, the right-handers play right wing, and you know then natural uh, natural side instead of the offside. Um, as you can see, we still have John Carlson. Uh, we have Rasmus Rustalainen, who I believe was traded for by the previous user. Um, then we got Vince Dunn. Um, Matthias Norlander, uh, Norlander. Uh, this is actually a guy I traded the fifth or sixth overall pick for. I traded for him and then another prospect from the team I traded with. As you can see, he's got good talent. He's got a four-star talent. I mean, a four-star potential, uh, two-star talent. So he still has room to grow. And then we got our workhorse uh, for the future, who's going to be Ilya Samsonov, unless something, something else comes about. Uh, but let's take a look at that injured list. We got a, two key players right now on the injured list. We got Evgeny Kuznetsov, who's still with the Caps at, on age 30 season. As you can see, he's going to be out for a while, two to three months. He was actually injured uh, midway through October. So he was a big part of our team uh, going down early in the season. 
Um, then you're going to take Nikita Alexandrov, who was on his line. Uh, funny thing that they both got injured, but he was on his line. They were both pretty much struggling. Uh, seven games played, two points for Evgeny Kuznetsov, and then Nikita Alexandrov had no points through five games. So they were struggling, but it does suck to not have them. They're both uh, high-skilled players, top six players, so uh, we had to find some replacements in uh, the top six. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our lines right now. So you take a look at our lines, it looks a little different because uh, we don't have those two guys in there. Um, as you can see, Brandon Perlini is on the first line with Ryan Johansson and Lucas Raymond. Um, I got Perlini up there because him and Raymond, uh, we'll go back real quick, I want to show you something. So we're going to take a look at Raymond real quick. As you can see, on the right-hand side, you see line chemistry. Um, as you can see, Brian Perlini has got good line chemistry with him. So that's kind of the reason that he's up there with him. So I try to make sure that uh, our lines have some chemistry. But you know, when you get new guys that come into the system, they really don't have chemistry with anybody. So uh, sometimes you just got to work on it. As you can see on our second line, we got Christian Dvorak playing the wing for a rookie in Karna McMichael, who's got good potential, um, but he doesn't have a lot of talent yet, but he is NHL ready, uh, PSHL ready, I should say. Um, he's PSA, uh, PSHL ready, um, but he needs some time to develop. We had Nikita Alexandrov, so we didn't have to rush him in, but now due to the injury, he's our next best option because we could send him down without him going through waivers. Um, then we got Morgan Geeky, Morgan Geeky playing that right side for him. Um, third line, we got Jared McCann, Nick Bjergstad, and then we got uh, Josh Levo. Uh, Nick Bjergstad and Jared McCann have really good chemistry, so that's kind of why they're there together. And then we got Alex Kalorn, uh, Mackenzie Entwistle, if I pronounced that right. And then if you hold it, you can see I pulled up a drop box that actually tells me who he has good uh, chemistry with. Uh, so as you can see, he has good chemistry with Alex Kalorn, uh, moderate, moderate chemistry with uh, Conley and Perlini, but he's with Kalorn because they have good chemistry. And then we got Zach Hyman playing that right wing. So these guys I have in the bottom six are mainly defensive. Um, Jared McCann, uh, uh, from what I looked at, he actually could play top six or bottom six. He's a good middle, middle guy. So we have him right now playing in that third line, which is known to be a checking line. Um, and then you take a look at our defense. We got uh, Vince Dunn uh, teamed up with John Carlson, who's getting the most minutes with a 24. And then you got Alex Alexiev and Rasmus Rustalainen as our second here. And then we got the rookie Matthias Norlander, Norlander and Mackenzie Weger to wrap that up. And you can see down here with our goalies, we got Ilya Samsonov starting and then Jared Allen being our backup. Uh, but that's pretty much to do with lines. I'm not going to go into uh, power play, penalty killing, four on four, three on three, and goalie starts. We're not going to really go into that. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit about the schedule and how we've looked so far. As you can see, we simmed through the first week of November. Um, but this is basically going to be about October. Um, we didn't start off hot. We started off with a loss to Carolina. Um, we lost four to three. Um, take a look at some of the stats. Uh, we had we had a, a good start. We started off two two nothing, um, and then Carolina tied it up two two in a second, and then they ended up winning it in a third, scoring two. We scored one to make it close, but we really didn't um, we really didn't deserve that win after going up early and then giving it away. Uh, you can see here Carolina had 42 shots, so they were definitely peppering Ilya Samson off. Uh, in that game, you take a look. We we lost again, so we started off 0-2, losing to Ottawa 5-1. Uh, then we got our first win against the Vegas Golden Knights 2-1. Um, so right now, after the first week, with 1 and 2, not looking too good. Um, I think this Vegas Golden Knights was this an overtime win? Yes. Wait, no, it was an overtime win. This was actually in regulation. Uh, it was 1-1 going into the third. We scored in the third period to uh, get that win. Um, but we're gonna take a look right here. We got Detroit um, after Vegas, so we ended up losing to them four to one. Uh, then we ran into Dallas, who we beat six five. I believe this was the overtime game that I was talking about. Actually, it went into a shootout, and we won six to five. So right now, um, after those six games, oh, those five games were two and three. 
so we're not looking too hot to start. And this is before we even lost Evgeny Kuznetsov and uh, Nikita Alexandrov. Um, then we played the St. Louis Blues and we lost 4-1 to one there. So we dropped to 2-4. and four. And then we lost again to Vancouver, 5-4. So we dropped to 2-6. and six. This might have been an overtime loss. So, yes, this was a shootout loss, actually. So when we lost that, we dropped to 2-5-1. and one. Um, Then you take a look at uh, Toronto. We got beat pretty badly 4 to 1. So after 2 weeks as you can see here we ended up 2 5 and 1. Uh, then we went into Detroit for our second matchup and we lost 4 to 3. Uh, then we went into Anna uh, we went up against Anaheim. This one was actually at home. We lost 4 to 1. So I think Detroit was that was another overtime loss. So we at least got a point there. So at the end of um, at the end of the Anaheim game so we're, we're looking at a record of two six and two so we're not looking too hard to start off in october then we run into montreal we lose two to one this actually might have been a overtime loss but it actually wasn't so we lost in regulation so now we're two seven and one, uh two seven and two uh we go into carolina after a long slide of losses uh we finally get a win here and this was actually in a shootout so another shootout win for us uh we end up three uh three seven and two then we jump into LA. Uh, we lose four to one to LA, making us three eight and three eight and two. Um, then we go into uh, to we go back home to play New York, the Islanders, and we ended up beating them four to three. And that was in regulation, but we ended up winning four three, uh, which brings our record to four eight and two, I believe. Yes, four eight and two. And then we jump into the New York Rangers, and we actually get a win there as well. Uh, bringing our record to five eight and two so we ended up the month of October we ended up five eight and two um, Definitely not what we're looking for. So we ended up with 12 points uh, out of the first month um, We played a lot of games in the first month I was actually surprised when we were swimming how many games we played but five eight and two is not Terrible. It's so early in the season. So hopefully we pick it up um, We'll go into November um, as you can see, we're 7, 9, and 2, so you could already see. So I might as well just jump into that right now. Um, so first week of November, we faced Dallas to start off on a Tuesday. Uh, we win 3-1. to one. So we start off November with a, a good win, and then we follow it up with another good win, 3 nothing against the New York Rangers. And Ilya Samsonov had a really good game, I believe, in this one. He had 33 saves. Really carried us to victory there. And then we had a loss to end the week to the Nashville Predators, uh, four to two. Um, disappointing loss. Uh, I think Jared Allen started this game. I'm trying to think of. Let me see here. Who started this game for us? As you can see, you go through here. Um, I didn't really talk about this before, but you go through all this. You can see the game ratings, how team, uh, how players perform offensively, how players perform defensively. You can see all their stats and their total game rating, and you can sort it by that. So if I want to see game rating, you can see Nick Bjergstad at our best game rating at 74. He had a 68 offensive rating, and then a, um, he had a 70 defensive rating. Um, but if you go down, we can see who started this game. It was Ilya Samsonov. Gave, gave him four goals on 35 shots. So he had 31 saves. Not the best performance coming off a shutout, but it is what it is. Um, we'll take a loss there. So if we start off the week, uh, the month of November, two and one. So that's not bad. Uh, hopefully we turn it up and we have a way better month than we did in October. And it will help once we get our um, our injured players back. When I when I talk, once we get Nikita, we're gonna get Nikita and Alexandrov back after this next sim. Um, and then we'll get Evgeny Kuznetsov back in two to three months. So uh, we'll see how the team's looking then. Maybe I move him. I don't know. We'll see what happens there. But as you can see, we can take a look at everything. Uh, this game is pretty advanced. Like it has a lot. Um, take a look at the contract, the team finances. Um, you can go into team finances. You can see salary obligations for each player. Um, it breaks it down total forwards, how much you're paying each, uh, how much you're paying for all your forwards, how much you're paying for all your defensemen. 
uh, total for gold for gold tenders, and then you can go down and look at the total money that you got and the age all at the at the time. Um, it even breaks it down further for cap obligations instead of salary obligations. So this is just numbers off the cap. When you look at your your cap hit, this is what you're trying to look for. Salary is their total salary. I don't know the big difference there. Um, I guess cap obligations would probably be with bonuses and stuff and things like that. But I'm not totally sure. You you take a look. We got you could go into your scouting. You could assign certain ass assignments. As you can see, nobody's got an assignment right now, so I got to get on that. Um, and then we got our training. So basically, I can choose each player. And as you can see, in parentheses, they got uh, certain numbers next to them. So the more people that you train, uh, the lower the number gets. And that number basically is saying how much focus is going into that player and uh, in that certain training. So we have mental training physical training, offensive training, defensive training, and then goalie training. So you take a look at the mental training. As you can see, there's a nine next to a bunch of guys. That means based on how many guys I have uh, the coach focusing on mental training with, it drops his, it drops um, the amount he's able to put into one player and help him develop that. So um, if I had less people being focused on me mental training, then the number would be higher so if i take off john carlson real quick as you can see it jumps up to 10. so if i add more it's going to drop drop down to eight um it's a simple thing to really follow um but that's pretty much going to do it um that's basically uh what it is uh, i will be trying to do this every month we'll see if, if it lasts um right now i think it'll be a little interesting it'll be interesting for the league i'm in it'll be interesting for the players in that league so we'll see what other people think about it um but that's pretty much going to do it for this uh episode thank you for tuning in i hope you enjoy it and i'll have a good one